Hi everyone, I'm really excited to be finally kicking this video series off. I'm going to start with a demonstration of the entire process so that you've got an idea of what we'll be diving into with the video series. Partway through the project, my brother Fidgeting Bits started collaborating with me to help speed things up, and I mentioned that early on just because this was a joint effort. Before we get into the video, there are a couple of things I want to point out just so that you've got a better understanding of what you'll see. My ideal outcome with the entire process was for it to be entirely unattended from initial script execution to completion. However, we knew that this likely wouldn't be possible before we even started because we use passphrases for almost all of our SSH keys. And as you'll see, there are many times where SSH auth is required. We also decided to add several yes, no prompts at important places during the script. The additional attendance that these require is somewhat trivial considering that there are already SSH prompts that come up. And importantly, they allow us to skip over specific sections of the script in order to help with testing. As you can imagine, debugging this script involved countless reboots into the ISO, reinstallation of NixOS, rebuilds of the config, etc., to work out all the kinks and niggles that we encountered along the way. On the topic of attending to prompts during the bootstrap process, it's worth pointing out that depending on your SecOps requirements, a significant number of these prompts could be eliminated simply by using SSH keys that don't have passphrases. Given this isn't the case for me, I haven't tested it, but I believe that the entire process could quite easily be cut down to a single prompt if someone wanted to remove all the yes-no prompts and use SSH keys without passphrases. It's possible that you could get the process to be entirely unattended. The last thing I'll mention before I run the demo is that you'll see some pop-ups asking to confirm user presence. When you see this, it means that there's an SSH prompt for a passphrase, but I happen to use a UB key so that I can just touch a device rather than manually enter the password. So when you see that pop up, it's just an indication to me that I need to touch my device. If you don't have a UB key, you would just have to manually enter your passphrase into the terminal, or like I said, use an SSH key that doesn't require a passphrase. So with that bit of preamble out of the way, let's run the script. On the right side of the screen is the target host, which is a QMU virtual machine. And we'll boot this into the optical drive, which has a NixOS ISO image loaded on it. On the left side is a terminal on the source machine, which has a copy of my Nix config repo and the private Nix secrets repo. The only requirement for the script to be run on the source host is that Nix is installed. It doesn't actually have to be running on Nix OS. In this case, the source machine is actually running Arch. So with the target machine booted into the ISO, we'll run the script. So there's that prompt for presence. I'll touch the Yubi key. We'll generate the hardware config on the target. And then we'll be remotely installing Nix using a minimal version of our flake. With Nix installed, the target will be rebooted and the script will wait until it comes back up. And now that we're booted into our minimal flake configuration, we'll generate age keys so that the target will be able to access SOP secrets. As you can see, we're updating our SOP secrets to remove a previous age key that had existed for this host, and we're adding a new one. Then we're pushing the updates to our private repo. To speed things up, we're going to copy the repo from the source machine to the target instead of cloning it from Git. Either works, but cloning from Git will take a little bit longer. And now we'll perform the full Nix config rebuild. This of course requires sudo on the target, so we'll provide the root password for our minimal config user, which is intentionally easier to remember and type because it's temporary. So there's also a spot here where we're manually typing yes to add the SSH fingerprint to our known hosts. This is a bug that we haven't sorted out yet. And we'll speed this video up significantly so you don't have to wait for all the downloading and building. Now our next config build is complete. And the last thing we'll do is commit and push the target host's hardware configuration to the next config repo. So now we'll move back over to the VM. This host happens to have a very basic Hyperland installation with auto login set up. So we'll do a quick reboot and make sure that that works.
So there you have it. Basically, one command on the source machine will get us from booting into an ISO to our full Nix config without having to manually partition the drives and with all of our secrets management in place. So how does all this work? In the rest of this video, we'll walk into the high-level order of operations that the script needs to execute, and in subsequent videos, we'll cover all the tools that are used to accomplish this, as well as all the modifications that are required to the Nix config, which includes the ability to generate custom ISO images, dynamically declaring our disk partitions, setting up a minimal version of our flake specifically for installation and testing, and then how the script actually handles that order of operations. And finally, we'll add Lux full disk encryption and impermanence into the mix. So let's take a look at the high level steps that this project set out to solve. In a typical manual installation without secrets, we would download an ISO image, boot the host into the ISO, partition our disks, install Nix OS, copy our Nix config over, build the config and update the config with our hardware configuration for that host. This would actually be very trivial to automate with some readily available tools, but alas, having no secrets in the mix isn't really practical. In performing a manual installation with secrets, the initial steps would be the same, but after installing Nix OS, we would generate a new host age key for use with SOPs. Then we would update the Nix secrets with that key, push the changes to the repo, and perform the rest of the installation. Adding secrets complicates things significantly. We can't simply build the Nix config because it uses our private Nix secrets as an input. A valid private key needs to be present on the host so it can download Nix secrets from the private repo during build. Not only that, even if Nix secrets has been successfully downloaded, the new host will require a valid age key for SOPs to decrypt our secrets during the build. To deal with this hurdle, we're left with some choices about what steps should occur on the new host versus on the existing host, the latter of which would already be able to access and update Nix secrets. There are likely several ways to go about this, but they would all require various manual steps to get the new host into a state that it will be successfully able to access secrets during the build. The solution that I chose prior to automation is to build a stripped down minimal version of the flake that aids in the process. And this is an idea that came from Ryan Yin's Nix config. I'll include a link to it in the description below. Check his stuff out, it's awesome. Ultimately, the minimal installer flake approach was also used for the automated process, which we'll talk about next. So now let's look at the steps that we'll automate for remote installation. First, we'll generate a custom ISO to ensure that we've got all the tools that we require. We'll boot the target host into that custom ISO, and then on a source host, we'll execute our automation script. And that will generate the target host's hardware configuration, remotely install Nix OS on the target using our minimal flake, generate an age key for the host to access our Nix secrets, update Nix secrets with that key, push the changes to our private repo, then we'll copy the Nix config and Nix secrets from the source to the target, run the full rebuild of Nix config, and finally add the new target's hardware config to the repo. Along the way, we'll also need to handle all of the SSH-related fingerprinting and authentication, do some validation checks, and have the script cleanly modify files so that if the script needs to be run multiple times on the same target for some reason, especially during testing or if we just need to reinstall a host, any existing SSH or secrets-related entries are replaced rather than added to. While writing the documentation for all of this, I realized that the steps above could be rearranged slightly and the minimal flake could be eliminated if one wanted to go that route. You would roughly eliminate two steps. However, I think there's significant value in having and using the minimal flake as an intermediary step. With future additions to the config, such as full disk encryption, impermanence, and who knows what else, we'll appreciate having the ability to quickly install a lightweight version of the config to test and validate assumptions without as much overhead. There will be fewer packages to download, faster build times, and a smaller footprint to debug when something inevitably goes sideways. So that's it for part one. Keep an eye out for the next one, which I'll be releasing shortly. Thank you so much for all the support and comments I've been receiving. I really appreciate it. See you in the next one. And remember, the way out is through.